To those on the outside, Robert Brooks appeared the epitome of a doting family man with a fondness for golf and upscale holidays. At the age of 50, this Hartford resident ran a prosperous enterprise, maintained a spotless criminal background, and even shared his expertise as a part-time driving instructor. Yet, beneath this respectable veneer lay the mastermind of a £58 million drug trafficking network, responsible for funneling around 1.8 tonnes of Class A drugs across the country within just under a year. His illicit empire was exposed when Border Force officials seized 45 kilograms of heroin, ingeniously concealed in the spider catches of a lorry arriving from the Netherlands. Despite the arrest of two cohorts and the seizure of 17 kilograms of cocaine en route to Brooks' business, his extravagant existence continued unabated, with law enforcement struggling to directly implicate him. This smuggling venture emerged as Hertfordshire's most gargantuan drug conspiracy setting a precedent for investigations in the area. Brooks' empire crumbled due to a seemingly trivial oversight, leaving law enforcement in disbelief. Welcome to the Pursuit of Perpetrators channel, where I unravel the veiled tales of cryptic crimes. On the 20th of August, 2019, Border Patrol agents intercepted a lorry, making its way from Calais to Dover. The journey between Calais and Dover holds immense importance for the UK, serving as a crucial conduit for the movement of people and goods into and out of Britain, as well as symbolising a defensive barrier against the smuggling of illegal goods. The vehicle, which had been loaded in the Netherlands, was driven by someone who claimed no involvement in the loading process, a claim not immediately out of the ordinary. Yet, UK Border Patrol had prior intelligence suggesting this lorry warranted closer scrutiny. During the examination of its cargo, officials uncovered 45 kilograms of heroin, concealed within pallets of spider catches. The discovery pointed to an attempt to smuggle Class A drugs into the UK, valued at over a million pounds, signalling to the police that they were on the trail of a significant criminal operation. Further investigation revealed records of 39 similar consignments previously delivered to a leased facility at Little Samuel's farm in Hunsdon, East Hertfordshire. Recognising the magnitude of their find, the police were under pressure to devise a strategy within 24 hours to outwit the criminals by maintaining the illusion of business as usual. Their plan, to let the shipment reach its intended destination, thereby drawing the criminals out into the open. The approach was fraught with risk, placing immense pressure on the detectives who opted to install cameras and microphones throughout the van, aiming to apprehend the culprits in the act. This high-stakes operation was featured on the on the farm premises. A man in his early 30s is captured on camera as he opens the box. Overheard exclusively, Campbell and Wozniak were present inside the premises. Fortuitously, a search of Campbell yielded an EncroChat encrypted device, an apparatus commanding a price tag of up to £15,000 and favoured by those entrenched in serious organised crime. The device, found unlocked, laid bare the magnitude of the conspiracy and the identities of its participants. Campbell had been in communication with an individual known by the alias Jaguar Palace, evidently the orchestrator of the operation, with suspicions suggesting this figure was operating out of Spain. Conversations intercepted at the time of delivery showed Jaguar Palace advising Campbell to remain vigilant and anticipate four boxes, indicative of the heroin quantities expected. The dialogue also revealed Jaguar Palace's financial dealings, charging criminal factions between £15,000 and £20,000 per importation. Detectives swiftly turned their attention to the proprietorial details of Happy Day Camper's post-confirmation that the consignment was bound for this location, revealing 50-year-old Robert Brooks, a part-time driving instructor, as the owner. Further inquiry at the residence of Richard Campbell brought to light Brooks's long-standing managerial role, as disclosed by Campbell's unsuspecting wife. Despite uncovering Brooks's affluent lifestyle, including ownership of a villa in Alicante to which he frequently retreated for holidays alone or with family, and his exploits across America and Dubai as boasted on his Facebook page, police refrained from immediate action. This restraint extended months beyond the initial drug interdiction. Notably, the police identified Brooks as the owner of Happy Day Campers, a venture on the verge of collapse and yielding no profit, thereby intensifying suspicions around his extravagant lifestyle. The facade of the business was evident, it served as a cover for the narcotics scheme orchestrated by Robert Brooks. Yet, to secure his conviction, the police required incontrovertible evidence. While the accumulated evidence hinted at his involvement, it fell short of the definitive proof needed for a conviction. Nonetheless, it was Brooks's own oversight that would precipitate his downfall. Within the confines of Happy Camper's industrial unit, a red Ford Fiesta owned by Brooks was discovered. 
Given Brooks's profession as a driving instructor, the vehicle was essential for his livelihood, and it was equipped with a dash cam designed to activate upon detecting motion nearby. The discovery of this technology didn't come as a shock to the investigators. However, they were taken aback upon finding footage dated August 14th and 15th, 2019. A comparison of these dates with the records of past consignments delivered by the same courier company revealed a correlation with a drug shipment date. This footage not only placed Brooks at the scene on the day of the delivery, but also unveiled the identity of the fourth gang member, previously unknown to the authorities. The individual identified through the dashcam footage was Stephen Cap, a 56-year-old former lorry driver from Hull, implicated in the operation as the courier responsible for transporting drugs from the farm to the north of England. The footage revealed telling signs of illicit undertakings, a brand new Audi sports car was seen reversing into the unit, following which the shutters were promptly closed. Such activities bore no resemblance to the operations of a legitimate campervan rental service or the routine practices of a driving instructor. Yet, in the realm of criminal investigations, especially those of this, they monitored Stephen Capp's movements as he transported narcotics from the farm across the northern and southern parts of England. Devers, as police discovered five kilograms of cocaine in a concealed compartment within his car. Distraught, Cap lamented his actions post-arrest, acknowledging his grave mistake. This development intensified the scrutiny on Robert Brooks. Aware of the operation at Little Samuel's farm, and likely informed of his principal courier's apprehension, Brooks hadn't anticipated the evidence gathered from his own vehicle. Prior to this, the police had already intercepted a significant drug shipment directed to his business. At the station, Brooks submitted a prepared statement insisting his activities at Little Samuel's farm were limited to vehicle storage and maintenance, denying any knowledge of the narcotics. He claimed a casual acquaintance with Campbell and described Thomas Wozniak merely as Campbell's gardener. Despite his assertions, the police opted to release Brooks, maintaining discreet surveillance to observe his daily routines, which included leisurely activities and transactions conducted exclusively in cash without engaging in regular employment. Ultimately, the detectives collated sufficient evidence for Brooks's arrest, marking a pivotal moment that undoubtedly transformed his life. The prospect of facing substantial prison time crystallized the risks associated with his criminal choices. Robert Brooks, who had indulged in a luxurious lifestyle, including international travels and family vacations at a Spanish villa, epitomized the perilous gamble of criminal life. Engaging in criminality trades long-term security for fleeting gains, a gamble seldom won. Despite the opportunity to disengage with his illicit earnings, the narrative underscores the critical juncture at which individuals must choose between continuing down a perilous path or securing their future through legitimate means. Brooks, unfortunately, did not opt for the latter. Engaging in 37 smuggling operations, Robert Brooks faced severe consequences. Amidst the turmoil, he made a poignant phone call to his son from the police station a conversation marked by a blend of normalcy and despair on his son's birthday. Hello, little man. Happy birthday. It's absurd, isn't it, that you don't get the day off for your birthday? When asked why he wasn't there to celebrate, Brooks offered a fabricated excuse. I'm at work and my phone's in my locker, so I've just borrowed someone else's to use the office phone. The call concluded with Brooks expressing deep affection. All right, listen, I want you to have a wonderful day and I love you to the moon and back. All right, mate, speak to you later. Love you. At the trial, it was disclosed that Richard Campbell served as the warehouse manager. He pleaded guilty to conspiring to circumvent the prohibition of Class A drugs and received a sentence of 13 and a half years. During sentencing, Campbell reflected on the repercussions of his actions, lamenting the irrevocable harm he had caused his family, emphasizing that no gain could justify the anguish inflicted. Stephen Cap, a solitary figure with scant family connections, was caught in a particularly human moment at the police station speaking to a loved one over the phone. His plea, don't stop loving me, followed by tears, strikes a chord of empathy, yet serves as a stark reminder of the devastating impact that involvement in serious organized crime can have on individuals' lives. Cap admitted to charges of possessing Class A drugs with the intention to distribute and was subsequently sentenced to nine years and six months in prison. Thomas Wozniak, who played a minor role within the conspiracy, was employed as a worker in the warehouse. During his court appearance, Wozniak depicted himself as a vulnerable individual who, upon arriving in the UK, found a friend in Campbell. Despite this portrayal, evidence showed his awareness and involvement in the criminal activities. Following each delivery, he or Campbell would dispose of the spider catches in the skip outside the warehouse, 
after removing the drugs from their packaging. This act further implicated him in the depth of the conspiracy, underscoring the consequences of his choices. At the age of 28, Thomas Wozniak acknowledged his part in the conspiracy to distribute a Class A controlled substance and received a prison sentence of six years and three months. However, the net of justice extended beyond the UK borders. Peter Menneson, aged 50 from Amsterdam, was apprehended by Dutch authorities following a cocaine seizure in the Netherlands, leading to a six-year prison sentence in his home country. This outcome presents a noticeable contrast to the 21-year sentence handed down to Robert Brooks in the UK, highlighting the stern stance the British judicial system adopts towards drug smuggling. The disparity in sentencing between Brooks, the orchestrator of the UK operations, and Menison, implicated in the Netherlands, raises questions about the international consistency in punishing drug-related crimes. The significant difference in the length of their sentences opens a dialogue on the effectiveness and fairness of drug law enforcement across borders. I invite our viewers to share their perspectives on the sentencing outcomes for each gang member and to reflect on the variance in punishment between Brooks and Menison. Your insights on whether these sentences are just, too severe, or perhaps insufficient given the scale of their criminal activities would add depth to our discussion. Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this investigative rundown enlightening, do hit the like button, share it with your friends, and make sure to subscribe to the Pursuit of Perpetrators channel. Don't forget to give the bell icon a tap too, ensuring you stay updated with each new video I release. Your support means a great deal to me, and I'm eager to reconvene with you tomorrow. Until then, maintain that inquisitive spirit and never cease in your quest for truth.